If you've been trying to take the Biden administration seriously, they're not making it any easier for you. This is how the White House National Security Communications Advisor, John Kirby, labelled an upcoming press conference with the president. After that, the president will hold a press conference. I guess a big boy press conference yes. is what we're calling it. Um, and take some questions from y'all. A big boy press conference. Did he really just say that? After that, the president will hold a press conference. I guess a big boy press conference yes. is what we're calling it. Um, and take some questions from y'all. OK, yep, he did. American voters are right now expressing their horror on social media, posting on X about how embarrassing and cringe this is. Here is Jill Biden trying to sway voters. You deserve a commander in chief who serves with integrity and wisdom and character. And that's my husband, Joe Biden. Look, she's right. But crucially, the American people deserve a leader who is without a doubt mentally fit. But you be the judge. Here is Joe Biden calling into MSNBC to tell the world, no matter what, he is running for a second term. The Biden plan, which got in, in, in Israel for, 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 for the Gaza Strip, is something that was adopted by the UN Security Council. Whether it comes to fruition, it's awful close. We'll see. G7. Okay. But look, I, I, I'm not going to explain any more about what I should or shouldn't do. I am running. I am running. Mm -hmm. And if you want to stop I, I, I me, wanna, come I, I, he, he just makes no sense. And the conversation is quickly turning to who could replace him. Here are the late debate hosts going through the options. To the US now, where four more senior House Democrats are calling on Joe Biden. Buddy, pack up, leave, do not run for re-election. Biden doesn't seem to be listening to any of these people, even though the polls unquestionably back them up. He has no chance of winning against Donald Trump, who will undoubtedly be the Republican nominee. Here he was, busy over the weekend, proving to everyone... Biden, he's still up for the job. Well, guess what? They're trying to push me out on the race. No. Well, let me say this as clearly as I can. I'm staying in the race. Yeah. I'll beat Donald Trump. I will beat him again in 2020. <laughs> he was doing so well until that last little bit there. I'll beat him again in 2020. Also, I'm not sure the president even knows what Color he is these days. Here he is again. By the way, I'm proud to be, as I said, the first vice president, first black woman mm -hmm. to serve with a black president. <laughs> uh, you're not uh, black, Joe. I mean, I, I remember you telling people back in 2020, if you don't vote Democrat, you ain't black. Meanwhile, the latest Ipsos poll shows that Barack Obama's wife, Michelle Obama, is the only Democratic nominee out of their pool of, I don't even know whether to call them hopefuls, who could <laughs> beat Donald Trump if it came to that. Of course, this is unfortunate because as recently as last week, she released a statement saying, I am not running. It's not going to happen. And what I can't believe is the Dems still won't give a side glance to RFK Jr. <laughs> Edward Snowden tweeted uh, recently, which made me laugh because I've been thinking the same for a long time, darkly amusing to watch panicked Dems suddenly searching under the couch cushions for a candidate when Kennedy is literally standing <laughs> right there. But you um, laugh, Joe, but he's been doing very well as an I'm independent not, I'm not and sure, working to be welcomed back yeah. as the Democratic nominee. Can I, just, I think he I don't know. Did he barbecue a dog? <laughs> no. Uh, did you see the video he made? Like, chopping up, because he has three dogs, yeah. and he was chopping up chicken and frying it in the pan, being like, this was supposed to be my dinner, but these guys have read the news. They're so upset by the fake news that I ate a dog, <laughs> and he's, like, sitting on the floor and spoon-feeding them and reading okay. them a book. The, the poll that shows Michelle uh, Obama would Big beat Mike. Trump, that same poll shows that Biden and Trump are neck and neck. Uh, that cannot be yeah, correct. Yeah, well, it depends. I mean, if, you know, if you laid all the polls in America end to end, they still wouldn't reach a well, conclusion. I mean, um, Obama's but, former strategist has said that if Biden runs, he will lose in an absolute landslide. There's no question about it. And, and this is what was really funny about, like, 
Joe Biden's like, they're trying to push me out of the election. It's like all these sinister forces. Mate, it's your own team. It's your guys <laughs> who are trying own? to push you out. By his own team. His own now. That, that's right. He's going to win again in 2020. You know, his team nice leaked uh, notes today that showed, this was in the uh, UK Telegraph, that showed that when he goes to an event, they're giving him not just notes of who to talk to, etc., mm. etc., but they're actually maps about where to walk on mm. stage, where the podium would be, oh, where to walk it's... off. Uh, he's getting holding. all sorts of instruction. This is all being leaked, so uh, I don't reckon he'll make it to <laughs> November. Not deliberate at all. It's like when, it's like when Homer Sim the Simpsons become the Thompsons and Homer Simpson is being taught his lines. He goes, when I say hello, Mr. Thompson, and stamp your foot, you say hello. Hello, Mr. Thompson. And Homer goes, I think he's talking to you. <laughs> that is now Joe Biden. Good night, everybody. We're going to go... Former White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney told Sky News the people around Joe Biden are the ones telling him to stay in the race. Biden is not backing down. Do you think that's a selfish move? Is it in the best interest of the Democratic Party that's arguably looking pretty weak, panicked and at odds at the moment? Yeah, Holly, it's absolutely fascinating to watch. It's unlike anything I think any of us have seen in our adult lifetimes, for sure. Um, the, the mutiny now on the Democrat side is growing every single hour. Uh, the Congress just returned to Washington, D.C. this evening, as you and I chat, and already there's another high-ranking Democrat member of the House uh, from the armed for, uh, for the for the Armed Services Committee, as a matter of fact, who's come out calling on Joe Biden to step aside as the candidate. So this is continuing to 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 grow. I'm not sure how it stops. You ask a question, is it a selfish thing? It depends. Put yourself in Joe Biden's shoes. Everyone that seems to be around him is telling him what a great job he's doing. Um, he was asked famously last week in, in an interview um, in prime time whether or not he had even seen the debate since since it took place. And he said that he couldn't remember and thinks that he probably did not. Um, so that's the type of insulation that is around the president right now. And if everybody's telling you you did a great job and it's no big deal, why wouldn't you continue to run for president just as Joe Biden is uh, indicating that he will? Mm, interesting that they would say he did a good job when so many people um, watching that debate, it was undeniably really awkward to watch. Um, Biden himself has admitted that it was a, quote, bad night. Um, he struggled to think on his feet unscripted. There's no doubt about that. It's left a lot of people wondering who is running the country at the moment. I mean, reports that a top specialist in Parkinson's disease has visited the White House eight times in about eight months, I think it is. Um, the White House, though, says Biden has not been treated for the disease. Uh, First Lady Jill Biden has even snapped at reporters about these continuous questions here about his health. Let's take a listen to that. What are your thoughts on that, Mick? She's coming under a great deal of scrutiny, um, a great many questions as to whether or not she's now sort of the, the man behind the curtain in the Oval Office. Um, she uh, was on stage immediately um, with her husband after the debate last week. Most of the nation saw that. What most of the nation did not see was a quick rally they went to afterwards. It was covered on some of the smaller networks here where she essentially propped him up on stage and said, you did such a great job. You, you knew all the answers to all the questions. Isn't he doing great? We need four more years. Um, and she's coming under more and more scrutiny every single day as to whether or not she is the one who is refusing to tell Joe Biden how poorly he did in that debate and how much he is at risk. Certainly, it's a very difficult position for any family member to be in. Imagine the pressures being the first lady of the United States and having to have those conversation. But all eyes are, have really been on Jill Biden in the last week as to what she is telling uh, President Joe Biden, whether or not she is the reason that he's still in this race. What are your thoughts on the reports about a Parkinson's disease specialist visiting the White House? Yeah, that, that's fair. It's a good question. I don't worry about that one too much. I don't put much value in that. First of all, folks who are familiar with Parkinson's know that, that Joe Biden doesn't show many of the outward signs, at least of Parkinson's. And more importantly, um, the White House Medical Office serves probably five hundred people um, at any given time. Um, so it wouldn't be unusual for other folks within the White House to possibly be receiving care for Parkinson. So while it's certainly something that stands out because of the the, the context in which it's happening, my, ma my mind as a former chief of staff doesn't immediately make a, a leap from that to Joe Biden has, has Parkinson's disease. I, I, there's just too many things in between those two, uh, those two steps. 
Mm. And that's a really good point you make there. They could have been treating somebody else. Um, I think what's happening here is the mystery surrounding Joe Biden and sort of the rumour mill is in overdrive when it comes to his health and fitness. So um, by hearing that a specialist had visited there, of course, understandably, people are jumping to conclusions perhaps. Um, how is it that people in the US only have two options in Biden and Trump when at least 60 percent of Americans don't want to vote for either? Uh, you know, I'm not sure about that 60 percent number. Look, we both both of the parties had primaries. The Republicans had a little bit more robust primary than the Democrats did. But even the Democrats had other options. Every time folks ask me, you know, how do we end up with candidates that nobody wants? I keep asking, how do you know nobody wants them? They, they went through these primary processes. They won those primaries. Donald Trump won the nomination for the Republicans. Joe Biden won the nomination from the Democrats. I think it, it's an interesting conversation to have from an academic standpoint as to what's happening in the nation, as to why Donald Trump is still popular, why Joe Biden is still popular. Um, but this concept that we have this, this, these two candidates that nobody wants to vote for, I think, is, 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 is taken a little bit out of context. We had the debates. These are the candidates. Whether or not these remain the candidates it remains to be seen. Joe Biden, I still don't think can survive this, Holly. I think that the pushback has been, this is not a social media uprising. This is the New York Times. Mm. This is sitting senators. This is people running for office. These are large donors in the Democrat Party telling him he needs to go. I've never seen anybody come under that type of pressure and withstand it. Yes, and with, um, you know, that sort of weakness within his own party, it really doesn't look good. And as you just mentioned there, it could be hard to come back from that. I mean, we do have to wrap things up. We could keep talking about this for another hour or so, to be honest, Mick. But it could be a pretty messy week on Capitol Hill. Of course, the NATO summit is this week as well. And um, what are we likely to see there? What do you think uh, will unfold? Uh, it could be messy uh, a lot. He's going to have uh, Joe Biden is going to have to be make several public appearances. These are going to be substantive appearances. The focus on him is going to be incredible. Uh, there's going to be more and more announcements every single passing day from Washington with other Democrats calling for his resignation. And then again, again of course, Holly, uh, between now and, uh, and next Tuesday, we'll begin the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. So, yeah, it could get really, really messy here going into the uh, into the midsummer.